<clears throat> when I was 10, I ran inside from playing explorer through the rural suburbia of Johnston County. I was starving. Instead of finding pot roast waiting on our dinner table and my mom singing Pearl Jam in the kitchen, though, I found her slumped over at the top of our stairs. I didn't really understand what was happening, but it made more sense when I found the pill bottle in her bedroom. It was the first time I saw my mom high. As I took my two younger brothers by the hand and led them down the street to a neighbor's house, quickly telling them a story about a surprise dinner party, I think I was losing the ability to ever play without a care in the world again. I didn't know it yet, but from that night when my mom came to get us later on, to the time two years later when she cried in my arms as she found out she was unwillingly pregnant with my younger sister, to the times throughout high school when I'd held her hair as I forced up the bottles of vodka she drank, to the time this spring when we reconnected only after I succeeded in separating her from her abuser, my life would become one of forced, often resentful caretaking. And today, I stand here as a senior Moorhead Kane scholar. But this isn't some merit scholarship Cinderella story. The hardest years of my wild life were not the ones where I managed a billion high school clubs during the day only to come home, cook, clean, and put my babies to bed at night. They were actually the past four ones. I'm a first generation college student from a mess of a family. I'm someone with wildly mixed interests, and I'm also a Gemini. <laughs> when I came to Carolina, I had no idea how to act. I know people thought I was inauthentic. I was. As I desperately tried to keep up with my unbelievably intelligent, presumably jet-setting peers, I saw a mythic happiness. Happiness that I wanted. As I struggled with anxiety and toxic relationships and what I would later come to find out was insane <laughs> imposter syndrome, I followed what I thought was the recipe to success. Get good grades, keep moving. Be a campus leader, keep moving. Stop dating stupid boys, keep moving. Fight for women's rights. Through all of this, as I was building up my resume, I was building walls. When I looked in the mirror, I only judged myself. I never felt like I was enough. Now, I have been given some incredible opportunities while here, but despite all the pints on the roof of Parliament in London, the motorbike rides through the winding hills in Northern Thailand, and the domestic violence protective orders I helped secure in Durham, I still felt alone, sad, and angry. I had taken care of everyone else my entire life. I had never learned to take care of me. All the self-help books and therapy I tried just didn't quite stick. Then, this summer, I took a break from researching, well, from eating as many pastries as possible, in New York City one day to wander around the Lower East Side. When I stumbled upon Blue Stockings Bookstore, I thought, hey, awesome, I really could use some new domestic violence literature. Uh, <laughs> It was my research. <laughs> Instead, for whatever reason, when I walked inside, I picked up a copy of All About Love by Bell Hooks. And I read, I read feverishly for the first time. I was reading a book that taught me a way to not just move past my pain, but to live with it, to appreciate it. And through a pretty unusual mechanism, I was learning about a love ethic. I learned what self-love really meant. I learned how to analyze my life and make sure that empathy was at the forefront of everything I did. I understood that forgiveness and accountability don't have to be mutually exclusive. And this ethic started to transform the way I view the world. 
I chose to love. Now, my decision to love is actually the hardest choice I have ever made. It would be much easier to keep pushing ahead and away from what has hurt me. It's not fun to reckon with certain traumas. But I now choose to love because it allows me to put empathy, trust, and respect at the forefront of everything I do. It encourages me to treat others and myself the best I possibly can and prioritize that above all else. This love ethic has really allowed me to finally grow. Now, I don't have it all figured out, especially not even this love thing. But maybe part of the reason is that no one really talks about love. Defining love is scary. If we clearly define something, we may open ourselves up to realizing that we've never experienced it. But it's okay to accept that you could use at least some idea of love in your life, and maybe you don't know what that is. Choosing to love changed my life because it changed me. Now, what if we were to let it change all of us? What could that do for America? I now believe it is on us as leaders and those privileged enough to be sitting in this room today to explore the transformative power of love. It is on us to bring empathy into the home, the workforce, and the country. It is on us, not just as Moorhead Kane scholars, but as humans in an ever-changing, dynamic world to choose to love to encourage as many people as we can to put the human condition above all else and to respect that. As Bell Hooks says, the light of love is always in us, no matter how cold the flame. I challenge you to ignite it. In the meantime, I'm gonna go call my mom. Thank you.